Train commuters have been urged to check if their services are running this morning after a planned strike was called off. The majority of rail operators say that because the walkout was cancelled so late, there will still be a reduced timetable. Let's speak to our reporter Celestina Ololode, who is at uh, King's Cross for us this morning. Celestina, so the strike is off, but it could be a pretty tough commute for many today. Yeah, a mixed picture of delays and cancellations. That is what Network Rail has uh, told passengers to expect today. But I should say that since we've been here this morning, just take a look at the arrivals board here. It shows you that a number of services are expected to run from this station today. Now, having said that, earlier on I spoke to um, some passengers who are trying to get to Cambridge on the Lumo service. Their train has been cancelled. They're looking for alternative routes. But of course, how, how did we get here? We got here because uh, the RMT, that's one of the main unions that's in dispute with uh, Network Rail. There, there's a dispute over pay and uh, working conditions. And the RMT say that it's expected to ballot shortly, which could mean that there could be more strikes further on down the line. We will have to wait and see. But as you say, the main thing is that if you're traveling from uh, this station or any station today, please check with the rail provider beforehand. OK, Celestina, for now, thank you. I know you'll keep an eye on that for us this morning. Uh, more from there. This week, union leaders are expected to announce the biggest ever nurses' strike in the UK amid a dispute over pay. Yeah, ahead of the likely walkout by members of the Royal College of Nursing, our health reporter Laura Foster has been talking to workers who voted for and against the action. Exhausted, undervalued, overworked, saddened, overwhelmed, stressed. Geraldine and Diane's feelings about their jobs are very different from when they started as nurses seven years ago. You do an extraordinary job. Afford things and family life. I make sure I do extra shifts on the weekend, and you know I work full time during the week, and I then also have to give up my weekend so I don't get to see my son. I love being a nurse. I love what I do. I love seeing children thrive. I love empowering parents. But at the same time, I always have to think about myself outside of the nurse role. I need to live. I need to eat. I have dreams. I have aspirations, and if financially I'm being impacted, everything else will fall apart. You know, I don't want to wince at my bank account every month. The Royal College of Nursing says a typical full-time nurse earns roughly the same as the average full-time worker in the UK. That's about £33,000. But the starting salary for a band five nurse is closer to 27000 Nurses' salary who work for the NHS... In Karen uses TikTok to help people understand nurses' wages and disagrees with the idea that nurses should be happy with their pay. If people genuinely felt £27,000 was a good salary, universities would be inundated with people applying to be a nurse. Nurses wouldn't be leaving in record levels. NHS will be retaining staff and that's just not happening so clearly that money is not enough and nobody's saying a nursing role is any more important or any less important than any other public sector jobs this is just our fight job sites say they're noticing more and more nurses choosing to leave for less stressful roles even if it means earning less warehousing retail customer service and administrative roles. Those roles would typically pay considerably less than an average nursing role. Um, those, those sectors would typically offer something in the region of 10 to 12 pounds an hour compared to about 17 to 20 pounds an hour in nursing roles. So what would happen if union members vote for strike action where you live? The union would give notice to the health trusts and boards where members have voted to go on strike. On an agreed date, those nurses would stop working. There would still be safe staffing levels in emergency care and for urgent services, and it would be similar to the number of staff there'd be on Christmas Day. There could be disruption to pre-planned appointments. Some might have to be cancelled. Ian in Cornwall is concerned that strikes would be unsafe. How did you vote in the ballot, and why did you vote that way? Um, I voted no. I decided no because I felt we were going to put patients at risk. I know our leader at the RCN, Royal College of Nursing, have said we will not be putting patients at risk, but 
during this crisis, during this nursing crisis, if we reduce the staffing levels any further, the only outcome could be patient safety. So this is the reason that I voted no. The Welsh Government and the UK Government, who are responsible for healthcare in England, say they've met the recommendations given by the independent NHS pay review body. In Scotland, the Scottish Government says that its pay offer means its staff will be the best paid in the UK. Meanwhile, in Northern Ireland, no formal pay offer has yet been made. Any strike action would cause disruption, but many nurses feel they've been left with no alternative. Those who don't hear must feel it's time that it's going to be at the detriment of our patients, sadly, but this may be the only way for people to truly realise that we deserve more, we deserve better. Laura Foster, BBC News, East London. Now, with the squeeze on our finances uh, getting worse as we head into winter, of course, paying for things like Christmas, any gifts or treats could be a lot harder for many households. Research out today suggests more of us will be turning to Christmas credit. Nina can explain. Morning, Nina. Morning. Yeah, morning. Never cheap this time of year, is it? But the suggestion from this research is people are really looking ahead to the next six weeks and budgeting a bit more and wondering maybe for the first time whether they need to ask for some help, get some credit support in the run-up to Christmas. Yeah, good morning. Can you believe it? 48 days to go. Time to start thinking about how to make that day special, possibly on a different budget to last year. Energy bills are going up, most wages aren't keeping pace with rising costs and many households are having to cut their Christmas cloth in a more careful way. One college in Boston in Lincolnshire is providing courses to help people manage their finances but still have some festive fun. Once I was a flight risk The pressure of Christmas Slipping through the darkness Perhaps this year more challenging than most But soon I think I will be safe. We know that this Christmas is obviously going to be a real big challenge for particularly the homeless, those on the poverty line and the retired community. On pressures that mean there are now courses on offer being run by Boston College to help people get to grips with their finances ahead of the festivities. It's not just about going to Tesco or Asda or Lidl or Sainsbury's or whatever, it's about picking the right quality at the right price for your budget and being able to prepare with energy costs and everything else leading up to Christmas. So what we're here to do today, we're going to help the community, we're going to help the people of Boston use those skills, especially at this time of year when finances are stretched, make the most of the money they've got. Today's Boston College class started with bingo. Seven and one, 71. But out on the streets, it's more of a lottery as to whether people can afford their hopes for Christmas. Christmas is an extra pressure. Whether you do saving schemes or not, um, it will still mean that you may not be able to afford all that you want for Christmas. I mean, the price of a, of a turkey, just go to Asda, £22.50. Who's going to afford that? Are you budgeting already? Well, we just have to buy little bits here and there. Because if you leave it all in one go, it just cripples you. Not a challenge. You're going to catch a bus. Of course, with inflation putting up the prices of pretty much everything, this isn't just a problem confined to Christmas. It's going to be those months and weeks after Christmas as well. So the plan is to carry on with this after Christmas and help them budget, learn about the energy costs, so that they can survive, you know, till the weather gets better at least. That was a Crispin Rolfe reporting from Lincolnshire. Well, research out today shows that half of shoppers surveyed would be using credit plans this Christmas, including buy now, pay later options. And this is interesting. Of those paying on credit cards and credit payment plans like Klarna and Clearpay, a fifth would be doing so for the first time. You might expect this, though. The vast majority said they would be shopping around for the best deals this Christmas. Some said they might even wait for the sales. In some separate research out today for the Money and Pension Service, that's a government body offering debt advice, that suggests that one in six adults in the UK have no savings at all and more than a quarter have £100 or less. Now, if you're organised, you might have started your Christmas shopping. We spoke with shoppers in West London about how they're planning to pay for theirs. As a single parent at 18, if you can't afford it, you don't have it. Exactly. And I've lived that life ever since. <laughs> and I, I tend to buy things every so often on the run up to Christmas. Um, so I've just bought something for my nephew for Christmas and I'll keep buying bits and pieces as I go on. I'm most probably going to struggle 
and uh, plus I'll have to most probably you know, take my time with, well, I have to look after my money in a certain way and I'll have to spread my money out and this, I'll have to cut down on my money, put it that way. You're already in a bit of debt with Klarna because of, because of like having to buy supplies for uni and stuff um, and like food shopping and stuff, using Klarna for that is really helpful but it's also like quite like hard to be able to budget some money for like presents and stuff if you're if you're like having to save to like pay for electric and pay for food. Because and... obviously everything's gone up in price, um, food shopping, petrol, um, and yeah, it is a bit of a worry of you know how we're going to save enough to get enough presents. And are you looking forward to Christmas? Well, yeah, and my birthday's a day before Christmas. Oh, so, so it's like... double presents. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. Exactly. Oh, I always wondered if you got double presents, if you had a Christmas birthday. You can find lots of information, support and advice online at the BBC's Cost of Living page. Just there, put into the search engine, BBC Cost of Living, um, and lots of that will come up for you. Um, ben and Sally, really tempting, particularly at this time of year, to look at credit options. And actually, lots of people use credit really successfully, wait for the next payday, and it works out really well. But as we know, particularly at the moment, your outgoings are becoming increasingly unpredictable. So perhaps perhaps think about being a bit more cautious. We're going to be speaking in the studio with a representative from Citizens Advice later and finding out if you are turning to credit, what the advice is, where you have to be careful around that. And it's also because we've sort of got used to money being quite cheap, haven't we? That's because right. interest rates have been so low for so long. So now suddenly people are having a bit of a shock. Not only are prices going up, but the cost of borrowing that money also going up at the same time. And that could be a problem. I think that's right. I think for the, you know, up until this period, you've been able to do buy now, pay later without any interest at all in some schemes. And what we're seeing incrementally is interest being added on to new schemes and perhaps people not checking the small print, assuming that things haven't changed. So really important to be careful when using credit and important to say as I said earlier some people do use credit in a really healthy way that helps them get through the Christmas period so it can be really helpful yeah you just gotta be quite on it don't you plan it and make sure you know exactly what you're doing uh, Nina thank you some top tips there um, and as Nina said talking to citizens advice a little later about what you might need to think about if streets is going to be harder in a lot of homes Yes, research out today suggests more of us will turn to Christmas credit, maybe not the gift that we want. Uh, Nina has all those details. Hi, Nina. I do indeed. Can you believe it? 48 days to go. Time to start thinking about how to make that day special, but possibly on a different budget. Energy bills are going up. Most wages aren't keeping pace with rising costs and lots of households. Well, they're having to cut their Christmas cloth in a more careful way. There's research out today that shows that more, of half, more than half of shoppers surveyed would be using credit plans this Christmas, including buy now, pay later options. And of those paying on credit cards and credit payment plans like Klarna and Clearpay, a fifth will be doing so for the first time. You'd probably expect this. The vast majority said they would be shopping around and for some, well, they said they might even wait for the sales to buy gifts. Separate research out today suggests that one in six adults have absolutely no savings whatsoever and more than a quarter have just £100 or less. We spoke to some eager Christmas shoppers out and about in London about their Christmas payment plans. As a single parent at 18, if you can't afford it, you don't have it. Exactly. And I've lived that life ever since. <laughs> and I, I tend to buy things every so often on the route to Christmas. Um, so I've just bought something for my nephew for Christmas and I'll keep buying bits and pieces as I go on. I'm most probably going to struggle. And uh, plus I'll have to most probably you know, take my time with... Well, I have to look after my money in a certain way. And I'll have to spread my money out and this... I'll have to cut down on my money, put it that way. Already in a bit of debt with Klarna because of because of like having to buy supplies for uni and stuff um, and like food shopping and stuff. Using Klarna for that is really helpful, but it's also like quite like hard to be able to budget some money for like presents and stuff if you're if you're like having to save to like pay for electric and pay for food. Because and... obviously everything's gone up in price, um, food shopping, petrol, um, and yeah, it is a bit of a worry of you know how we're going to save enough to get enough presents. And are you looking forward to Christmas? Well, yeah, and my birthday's a day before Christmas. Oh, so, so like... double presents? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Exactly. 
Oh, I hope she does get double presents. Uh, we're joined now by Rosie Avis from Citizens Advice. Let's focus on credit specifically because it can be a friend to a consumer, can't it? If we're using credit, particularly increasingly, what do we need to look out for? So it's just really important to be thinking about what the repayments are, when you need to make them, um, and being aware of the sort of credit agreements that you're getting into. And I think that's something we're conscious of with Buy Now, Pay Later, is it's not regulated in the same way that other credit is. So people aren't necessarily always aware of the agreements that they're getting into and there's not as many protections for people if they do then struggle to keep it's up. It's literally the click of a mouse, isn't it, when you're shopping online in particular and a higher propensity for young consumers to use buy now, pay later. 30% of those who use it are in their 20s. Yes, and we know as well that two in five people that we spoke to are struggling to then keep up with the repayments and they're borrowing in order to pay off their buy now, pay later agreements and essentially they're piling debt upon debt and it's very worrying and interest rates are going up they could potentially go up again that's the expectation the deal that you're in in terms of taking credit out now well that could change later down the line if you take something else out couldn't it exactly so it's always good to be aware again of reading those terms what are you getting into when are you going to have to pay it back and what are the rates of repayment Part of the research out today, this is quite nice actually, lots of people are deciding to have Christmas and Christmas gifts in a different way, deciding, 20% of people said, to have a shared experience as a gift. That could be a way of saving money, couldn't it? It could be, and it's, a, it's just always important to think ahead of you sort of getting into your Christmas spending, how much is it you've got to spend? What do you need to sort of put aside? Um, and if you are going to have to rely on credit, then again, looking at those terms and making sure that you're sort of knowing what you're getting into, but also if you do struggle to keep up with those repayments, knowing that you're not alone and there is help out there. Because the research showed 43% of people who've borrowed are anxious about it, but 80% of them say they don't want to talk about it. What's your advice to people who are struggling? So we know that it's really difficult to talk about, but like I say, you're not alone. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of people out there. You know, we know it's been a really intense few months for people, as you say, rising inflation, rising prices. Um, and it's just important to make sure that you speak to somebody. Don't ignore those bills and letters coming through if you know you're going to struggle to keep up. Get in touch with someone like Citizens Advice. Speak to us. We might be able to help you find a smaller repayments and a way forward with those paying off that credit. And finally, for those thinking about using credit for the first time, because today's research showed that 20% of credit users at the moment are first-time users, what would you say to them? We say always be aware. We know that some people will need to do that mm. and it can't necessarily and always be And it can be, be really helpful. It can. It can be really helpful to spread those costs but it's just being aware of what you're getting into, making sure you're not taking on more credit than you can possibly pay back. So looking at what you've got going out, what you've got coming in, and what you can realistically afford to pay back if you put things on credit. Because it's a shame to let anxiety overwhelm the festive period, isn't it? Because it's Absolutely. such a special time of year, and we all deserve to enjoy it this year. Rosie, thank you very much. You. Uh, lots of information, support, advice online on the BBC's Cost of Living page. Uh, put uh, BBC Cost of Living into your browser lots and lots of information out there so yeah the advice ben sally is if you are using credit for the first time or taking out a new credit scheme for goodness sake read the small print because it's ever-changing yeah how to avoid that january hangover as well isn't it um nina thank you, thank you.